forbiddings of astrology. No, no outward direct forbiddings of it. Just no astrology. Okay, and then we get to Exodus, where we find Egypt, and we find loads of astrologers who are practicing magic, and everything is turned up again as it was before the flood. And so when they were released from Egypt, the first thing that created that flooded everyone, that created the Mamshat, Mim, uh, the M-A-H-A-L, say, no more. Never again practice astrology. Yet, there were smart ones who did, and not outside of this Creator's commands, because we are told that the Magi followed a star to find Jesus. And Job, uh, Job himself was, was asked, do you understand the Maseroth? Now, uh, the word Maseroth is an interesting word because it literally means the uh, pattern and the movements of the stars. Um, so the Maserat is a, is a uh, M A Z Z uh, M A Z Z A R O T H Maserat Roth means shield, right? Uh, the Zoro Astra, the maze. Right? The Ma. And Ma is mother. Ma is matriarch. And the matriarch, of course, is Nut. Uh, over the universe. Right? It is Nut. So the Ma, as Zoro. have arrow so the Maseroth is the shield of the mother the mother's shield and the only mother is the mother of the sky who is of course uh, And that's basically it. So, astrology is forbidden. I'm talking about a mistranslation between astrology and fortune tellers. Or future tellers. This is no, no. Right? That's a no, no. But this must know. Because in order, in order to understand yourself fully in this life, I have come to understand that you need what is called a natal chart. Okay? In order to fully understand who you are, you, know, you need to have a natal chart. Okay? This charts all the stars at the time at the time of your birth. Natal chart. So the natal chart will show you your strong and your weak points. This is important to know because some planets give you strong points and some planets are weak points. You gain too much. 
you're not being enough. And if you can learn to control this principle of uh, vibration and this polarity, why you would have a great uh, opportunity and chance to control the direction of your life. So we're talking about a natal chart and what we would like to do at Seven Aria in conclusion is to gather the best of those who understand syncretism and natal charts, charts and astrology to get together to put the sidereal and the tropical along with the IAU systems into one Severian birth uh, natal chart or birth chart. Okay? And these are to be presented to people at birth. But because our solution to the syncretism is to unite this into one new Severian chart, then it's given at birth, and then at 33 years, you're given another one. You're given another name. Uh, uh, this is the birth chart then, okay? So the other one, is, the first one is called natal chart. This one is called the birth chart because at 33 you have a second birth. And then at 55, you're given the Severian star. So three charts throughout your life that guide you. And this is our uh, goal, one of our goals. So people like uh, the great, I may say his name, Mr. Bonacci, Santos Bonacci, and uh, many other great astrologers and uh, syncretists uh, from around uh, the planet can come together at Seven Area. Uh, I don't have any funding, but voluntarily in the beginning, I hope to get funding so I can pay everyone. <laughs> voluntarily come together and really bring these three charts together because in this presentation, I hope I presented it, it's not. Uh, against the Bible uh, in any way to understand astrology. I think that was the original plan for the, uh, for the planets to rule us and for us to uh, be advised uh, by their presence. And I really want to thank you today for attending the first presentation with me, Israel Joseph, the founder and director of Seven Area University, uh, and it's a happy day. So we want to thank you so much, uh, and uh, I just want to leave by uh, showing you uh, that we are a couple of things here. What I was saying in the age of Aquarius, you see, the sun is moving through uh, the. Um, uh, the equinoxes and we started here at Adam and we're now here it moves counterclockwise not clockwise we move clockwise throughout the year the sun moves counterclockwise so we've passed through and we just left Pisces you see Jesus is time so now as of uh, 2020 as we discussed we're in the age of Aquarius so we got to start thinking differently and I want to thank you so much for listening to this presentation. I hope it's been good. And we'll do another one real soon on another topic. For now, thank you so much for joining us.